Okay, uh, so welcome to our last lab of this uh, big data analysis on AWS. Uh, so in today's lab, uh, we will use uh, Athena and also the QuickSight uh, to try to analyze the data in the S3. So S3 is a data lake solution that provided by AWS. So specifically, so uh, we will try to analyze uh, two type two data sets uh, by using a scene and also quick site. So the first one is the elastic load balancing log. So that is created um, by AWS. So more detail about the log you can find out through this URL. Uh, basically that is log file for each load balance node every five minutes. So uh, you can imagine that there will be huge amount of data set and those data are uh, stored on uh, in a public AWS S3 bucket. Okay, so we will try to load that data uh, um, and also we will query the data by Athena first. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go to the console. Uh, so before we start Athena, so let's look at how the S3 look like. So uh, let's create our own bucket. So let's uh, select S3. So if this is your first time to use S3, you can see everything is, it is empty. Um, bucket is the logic container that to organize the data on S3. Uh, so let's try to create uh, our first bucket. The bucket name must be unique. Uh, so let's see, I will use quite um, lab five and also my last name. See if that is available. Let's say create. Okay, it already exists. Uh, so I'm going to call it demo. Okay, so if you have the same situation, so you, you just try to use a slightly different name so that make sure that your bucket name is, is unique. So lab five uh, dash my last name dash demo. Okay, so now uh, this one is working. So now I just created a bucket. So if you go to the bucket, so this uh, within the bucket, uh, you can create folders. So those are the, uh, just like when you are using OneDrive, uh, Google Drive, or Dropbox. So you can create multiple folders and all you can just upload upload the files so for example if i want to upload something uh let's say i want to upload the syllabus of this class okay and you just hit upload okay so now this is uploaded so uh of course you can manually upload any other type of data like images videos etc um, um but in most cases, uh, we don't do that manually. So you can use, you can by calling the APIs uh, to upload data uh, with, in, with different programming language or using your uh, uh, applications. Okay, so that's, that's enough for this S3. So now let's go to Athena. So let's type Athena. So Athena is a, a, a server a service on AWS that you can query data in S3 by by using SQL. So let's go to Athena and let's get started. So you can see basically you, you just select the data set and create a table and also query the data. So that is this is pretty simple. So let's get started. And if this is your first time to use Athena, so you need to set up a query result location in S3. So that's the reason that why I want you to create a bucket in S3 first. So remember, this bucket is not um, is not the uh, uh, the place where your data is located. So this is a place where you want to save the result from the queries that in Athena. So let's see S3, let's use a format. Lab5, win, demo, okay. 
So that bucket uh, that I just created, so I use that bucket to store the result from Athena. Uh, so actually, you also need to give a folder name. So I just call it results. OK. OK, so that looks pretty good. And let's save. OK, uh, so now you're good to go. And so you can see by default, you have um, the data resource, which is AWS catalog. And you can connect a data resource, uh, data source um, here. So you can query, query your bucket um, by using a glue, or you can use the uh, Apache Hive. However, so we're not going to do that uh, by using connect. So we, we just run some simple queries. So uh, by using some SQL code to, to do the data connection. So uh, if you go to the my GitHub, so I provide the Athena code for you. OK, so that is uh, uh, the first Python code that we need to use. So you can see we create a table that is called uh, elastic load balancing logs in the ORC format. And we create those um, columns. Okay, so the column name and also the data type. And we also provide, so where does the data come from? So that is from this S3 bucket. You can see that is a thinner examples. Okay, uh, the ELB in this ELB folder. Okay, so that elastic load balancing folder, ORC folders, ORC format, where we are looking for the year that is in 2015 and also month is uh, January. Okay, so we are just looking for one month data. So let's copy this code to a thinner and let's paste that code. Okay. And you can run the query but just by hit run query. Or you can use this control plus enter to run the query. So let's say control enter. And now you can see it is success. OK. Uh, so now you can see my, in my default database, uh, I do have this table being created. And if I expand, you can see here I have those columns that uh, in within this table. OK, uh, so let's run another query. So let's say we want to look at the top 10 rows from this table. OK, so let's run the, another very simple query. Copy and paste and control enter. OK, so now you can see it's super fast. So those are the results from this table. So the request timestamp, ELB name, OK, request ID, uh, IP, etc. OK, so it return a table that uh, in a structure table. All right, uh, we can also run some even a little bit complicated queries. So for example, let's use a group. OK, and hopefully those Python, those SQL code uh, now uh, make sense to you. So we select uh, the name and also we count how many records are there per ELB name from this table. And uh, we are looking for um, um, the records where the response code equals 200. So if you want to know more details about what does each column mean? So you can go back to this uh, web page. OK, and we just want the top 10 records. And uh, OK, let's run the query, Control and also Enter. OK, you can see it's super fast. OK, so for this ELB, we have this number of the records. For this ELB, uh, we have this number of the records. OK. So you can see that the data is on this S3 bucket. So we load the data in, into our Athena so that we can query the result by using those SQL code. Uh, you can also save those queries so for the future use. So if you want to use those queries aloud. And you can also check the data resource. So here you can see we have this AWS catalog data resource, 
which is AWS Glue Data Catalog. And if we go to the Glue Console, we can see we have this table. So that contains the mental data from this uh, S3 bucket. OK, so that is in this S3 bucket. That is uh, uh, the folder that we loaded into our Athena. Uh, so if you check that folder, so now you we, now we are looking at you know the uh, the real bucket which is public. Okay, so we didn't create this S3 bucket. So this is created by Amazon. So they provide this bucket for the for the demo of the Athena. So now you can see those are the, the data that we just queried from those folders. So if we go to day one, that is the ORC file. Okay. And if we go to the day six, okay, that is the ORC files. Okay, uh, so you can see that the data is saved in this S3 bucket, uh, but Glue automatically uh, crawl the data. Okay, and also they extract the information uh, based on the queries that you defined, and and they return the metadata and in this uh, catalog so that now back to Athena so we are able to query those results okay so that is the story behind the scenes so actually we used Athena glue and also S3 bucket okay so that is one way that we can analyze data by using Athena another way is that so when we uh, connect data with Athena to uh, S3 bucket. So you, you can of course use those SQL queries or you can use QuickSight to visualize the data. So because sometimes we may prefer the data to be to be explored by using charts. Okay, so let's do that. So uh, the data we are going to use is this uh, NOAA Global Historical Climatology Network Daily Data. So that contains um, like the temperature, uh, precipitation, snow information. Um, this is a very, very big data, uh, huge data. And the data is in the uh, in a public S3 bucket. Okay, so the data is also saved in this public S3 bucket. And uh, so here are some ex explanations about the data. So like they have the element which has no uh, precipitation, etc. They also have M flag, Q flag, S flag. Okay, so if it, so, you can check this web page and to get more about the the data. Uh, so the data I I already hosted. Uh, so I already used my Athena account uh, to connect this um, uh, climate. Uh, uh, data set so so here this is my Athena uh, account and you can see I have this original tables and if I run these queries okay so you can see we have IDs date element okay date values so I already connect that one um, you can see that through the AWS glue and which direct connect to the data that in this S3 bucket Okay, so the data I already uh, created to my Athena account. So what we are going to do is that we just go to the AWS uh, Quick Site. Okay, uh, so once we logged in and we can see the uh, the analysis we created in the previous labs. And also, if this is your first time, you may also see that uh, there are also some sample analysis that already been connect created for you so that you can play with those analysis. Uh, you can see the data set. So in our previous lab, we have the event table from data warehouse. We have the house price table from the database. And also, they also have some other sample data from the S3 bucket. So those are uh, demo data provided by Amazon. 
And in the dashboard, you can see we have the two dashboard created from the previous labs. So now let's go to the data set and let's create a new data set. So this time we will choose Athena. So, uh, so remember that we are use Athena to query the data, uh, to query the NOAA uh, climate data. So click Athena, and you can give it an, uh, a name. So for this one, I call it um, Athena. And the primary is good, and let's valid, validate the connection. OK, so that is validated. So uh, if you're curious about this part, and that is because uh, the quick site is, uh, is created beneath my AWS account, and also a Athena service is also created beneath my AWS account. So that's why that I, we can use this quick site to query the data from my Athena account. Uh, a Athena service. So let's create this data source. So now we are connecting to my Athena service. So here you can see I have those multiple uh, data. So let's choose a block database. So that is where the original CSV table that we just saw earlier is located. So let's check that table. And let's also edit and preview the data. <coughs> OK, uh, so here we want to be careful because the data is super, super huge. So <laughs> this is the real, the big data. So um, let's uncheck some uh, field that we don't need. So let's check those flags, uncheck those flags. All right, uh, let's keep the ID, which is in a string format. Let's keep the element in a string format uh, value. OK, in a string format, uh, let's also uncheck the observed time. OK. And for the date, you can see right now it is in a string format. Actually, we know that that is actually year, uh, month, year, month, and also day. So let's switch this one to the date format. So we change the date type of the date into the date format. And Let's tell what is the format. So that is year, Y, 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 months, capital M, and the date, DD. OK, so let's update. OK, and now you can see they have been successfully successfully updated. Uh, that's, that's great. OK, and keep in mind that do not use the spicy this time. OK, there are two reasons. First, the data is too huge. That actually exceeds the, the storage limitation of the spicy. So if you choose spicy, you will have the error. The second reason is that spice, the reason is spicy is not free. So if you choose spicy, and we will use all the, uh, all the available storage on spicy. So do not use spicy. So the query will be slower, but um, we cannot use spicy uh, for this lab. OK, so now let's go to save and also visualize. All right, so we only have the date, data, date, element, and also ID. And before we create any visualizations, so let's also try to <laughs> to reduce the, the amount of the data. So let's create apply a filter first. Because we are only interested in the ring and also snow, so let's just select the element of the ring and also snow. So let's click element. And uh, for this lab, we have to be patient because the, the data is huge. So now QuickSight is sending query to a Asana. And Athena will return the data from the S3. OK, so now we finally have this list. Uh, so let's dislike everything. So first, let's check the snow. So we select snow. And the second one is the ring of precipitation, so PRCP. OK, and let's hit apply.
All right, uh, now let's go back to visualize. Uh, so let's just create two very simple visualizations. So let's first to create a bar chart uh, to see the number of the records in each of those elements. So let's see how many records are there. And again, this can be a little bit slow, so let's be patient. OK, so now we have two elements. And let's also create an account. So that we can sort those two elements. OK, so let's see how many records we have. So you can see for the ring, we have more than 100 million records. For the snow, we have more than 40 million records. OK, so that is really huge amount of the records that we're looking at. All right, let's add another visualization and let's see the values over the time. And for the date, let's aggregate at the month level. And let's see the average values. And let's also add the color. Okay, to for for the two element. Okay, and also this can also be a little bit slow, so let's be patient. Okay, uh, looks like um, the filter that I created earlier uh, didn't apply to this new visualization. So let's click the original one. And uh, in the filter, let's say we apply this one to all the visualization. OK, so here we go. So here you can see we have the values for the two um, element, uh, ring and also snow. And let's like, uh, we can also check in the recent years. OK, and you can see that in February, January and also um, uh, December. So we have more snow and in May, June, uh, April and uh, July we have more rain okay so that's that's pretty cool okay uh, so uh, we are not going to create the uh, more visualizations uh, so just create those two very simple visualization so the st story behind this lab is that so when the data are saved when the data are the raw data are saved on the in the data lake uh, either in, uh, in the S3 bucket OK, and we can use a thinner uh, to run those queries, interactive queries by using those uh, by typing the SQL code. Or we can visualize the data um, by using QuickSight. OK, uh, so finally for this lab, so let's share this dashboard. So let's call it your last name and the lab five. Okay, and also find out uh, my GMU e, uh, account and also give the permission as a viewer and share it. Okay, so that's all for this lab.